Hello YouTube, and today we're going to be talking about uh, rebuilding um, obsolete steam traps uh, using um, the information contained in the Barnes and Jones uh, trap steam trap repair guide. So the repair guide is pretty extensive and covers a multitude of companies uh, of which came and went some of which are still around, but most of them are not. And one of them is uh, the Bishop and Babcock uh, type of trap. And on page 11, we have a whole list and it carries over to the next page. These are some of the larger ones, the one inch and three quarter inch uh, traps. Um, but today we're going to be looking at half inch Bishop and Babcock G and when we consult the guide we have half inch G and then we have another half inch G and the inter this is the cage unit number here and it says you can use the existing cap and this one tells you that if you don't want to remove the seat, you can drop the um, cage unit inside the existing seat with the reduction in output. Um, and this one says VACU. And we go down here and we see half inch G and then VACU. And that's what I think I have here. Um, Bishop and Babcock, G, vacu trap. So when you get an inch and uh, 316 socket and impact this off, see the seat is there. We'll get to that later. And the cap is here, and what was here is was the um, element, the uh, thermostatic element that fits inside of the seat and opens and closes in the um, closes in the presence of steam and opens in the presence of relatively cool condensate. And the only way I was able to get this off because this spins on this stalk, you see. So the only way I was able to get it off is is bend this up and then take a, a saw and cut it off and then you still have this sticking down in there so you need a um, 11 16th socket and this comes out and here is the stalk and there is the little spring inside like so. So there was no way that a cage unit was going to sit up against there unless you remove this. So with the seat, the seat sticks down in this, um, uh, what do you call it, inlet. And uh, so the best way I, I found getting these seats out, particularly they're so shallow, is I take on uh, this particular one, I got a one inch socket and I ground down the edges and ground the bevel off to make it pretty flat so that it just fits in there like so. And that comes off. The seat comes out, unless with a fairly large hole. Um, so again, it says, double check it again, half inch, G Vaco, and that calls for a 2791 and an existing seat. And there's no option for a seat in. So I ordered it and I look at the cap. There it is there, a uh, 2791. Wait a minute. Now you just said I don't need a cap. Um, yeah, I found that that's usually not the case. So I, uh, order the cap anyway, just, just for, just to make sure, cause I'll, I'll get to why I ordered the cap in a bit, but here's a 2791. 
And you can see that's definitely not the right one. And also the 2791 cage unit comes in this cardboard box with the instructions wrapped around it. And that is the spring there, but it's pretty loose inside. Try to reuse the cover. That might work, but I don't think that's the right thing. There might be an issue, and here's, I'm going to relate to you an experience I had with another Bishop and Babcock unit, if you will indulge me. We've run into this several times before. Um, there it is, Bishop and Babcock, that's a number six, and it requires an inch and a quarter socket to get it off. It says multiflex on there. Now there are a couple of number sixes. There's a half inch number six requiring a 42, 32, again with the existing cover. Uh, but if you want to use the seat in, you need the new cover and you need to call out a, 40, a 42, 20. Uh, again, a six. And that about covers it as far as I can tell. So let's set this aside. So here's the number six. Uh, they both have the same patent date, by the way. Cover comes off. You have an element. Um, and the element is fairly easy to remove with a pair of channel locks. And that's fine as far as it goes. And you have your one inch um, seat, which is the same outer diameter. So that comes out. And you have this fairly large hole. So if you get the cage unit, um, the 42, uh, yeah, 4232, this is much larger than, oh, I shouldn't say much larger, but it is larger than the um, other cage unit for the uh, G vacuum. And that fits in there fairly snugly. Again, if you put this in, I would use some anti-seize, and you want to make sure that that is clean. No debris. So that sits in there, and it says that I can use the cap. Well, no, it really doesn't. I wouldn't want to do that. So if you have a number six... Bishop and Babcock half inch, I would get the cap because it fits in. It's still a little tight, but you can get it on there with the, I'd also use anti-seize on these threads, of course. And, and you can sort of push down on there. It would be really nice if they used the spring. This is just an experiment now. This should come off. Um, now, where was it? Uh, I almost feel like saying uh, a big Clive. One moment, please. Um, where'd it go? Must be right in front of me. You got to have that spring there, but the spring can be, I think, can be smaller. Um, there you are. It's right in there, right in front of me. So if you pop this spring off the uh, 27, uh, 97. 91, excuse me, and put it on there. That might work with the new cap. Nothing wrong with uh, using a new cap because then it indicates that the trap has been rebuilt unless you're diligent in, in marking the trap. That's still a little tight, though. Ugh. I guess that's what you're supposed to do. But anyway, I don't want to uh, bore you with that. This video has gone on uh, too long. And I thank you very much and uh, good luck.